Hi, I'm Josh Sellers, a geophysicist here at Sequent. Today I'll take you through a quick video of using the data services menu to download SRTM 30 meter topography to support your projects. We can use the data services menu to add some much needed context and valuable information on our California MEQ project. Before doing that, we'll create a map that will cover the extents of our California data. So we'll press scan data to ensure that the minimum, maximum X and Ys cover the entire database. We'll press next, give our map an appropriate name and press finish. To add some additional context to correctly locate ourselves spatially, we can go to the map tools menu and add a base map. For this example, we'll just use the defaults. This will generate a reference grid that shows us the correct UTM coordinates. We'll also notice in the bottom right corner that this map is tagged with the coordinate system that we've assigned the database. Now that we have a map in the correct reference frame, we can go to the Seeker menu, which is going to open up the Seek Data tool, where we can define the minimum and maximum latitude and longitude extents, or load the area of interest from an existing file in our Oasis Montage project. Here we see the state of California in the background. This will cover the extents of our project. Going to the results tab, we can connect to multiple different public geoscience servers, which Oasis Montage automatically allows you to download some valuable geoscience information, including, and not limited to, gravity and SRTM topography. Clicking the downloads page, we can click on either one of these objects and we can start to set rules on download. So we'll reproject both grids to a current map. This will automatically reproject these grids, likely from a geographic coordinate system, to something that we can automatically consume in the correct reference frame. Now that this data is downloaded, we can use it to begin to QC the locations of our MEQ data we downloaded from the California government website. The first thing I'll normally do is display both objects in 3D. So we'll create a new 3D view, which we'll use to compare the depths of our SRTM topography, which we just downloaded. We'll add that topography grid as a surface relief through the 3D menu. And we can also drag and drop the MEQ data directly from our database, choosing the depth meters channel as our elevation channel. So we can see here that the majority of our data is in fact below topography, but we do have some outliers. To give us a better view, we can go to the tools and settings menu, visualization, and we can apply a vertical stretch, which will allow us to identify any outliers. In this area, we can see that there's actually a couple of earthquakes that are above topography. We can sample the resulting SRTM grid onto our database and compare and contrast the depth and topography channels. Go to the grid and image menu and sample a grid. So we'll sample the SRTM grid downloaded from the Seek Data tool and we'll right click and press show symbol profile. This will show a symbol profile of the values associated with our channels. We'll also right click the depth channel and show symbol profile. To make sure we're viewing these both in the same Z reference frame, we'll right click and make sure that the Y axis are scaled similarly for all profiles. To remove any earthquake data that's above topography, we can go back to the channel math tool where we can design an if then expression to remove any values where depth is above topography. So here we have a math expression where if depth is greater than SRTM, we'll return a dummy. If depth is not greater than SRTM, it will return the values in C1. And we'll call this depth corrected. This gives us a more accurate view into the locations of our seismic events. We can then re-drag and drop the Kali MEQ data using the depth corrected channel as the new Z channel where we can see that those earthquakes located above topography are now removed. And finally, to get this information into a LeapFrog compatible format, 
we can go to the database menu and export these earthquakes as a CSV file. 